Hey everybody, thank you for coming to episode 6 of Reel Up For My Ride. So welcome aboard, whether you're new, whether you're coming back, it doesn't matter, you're all very welcome here. And as always, thank you for your likes, your comments, your subscriptions, absolutely everything that you guys are doing are helping the YouTube algorithm find a new audience and, and introduce new people to us, so everybody is, is welcome. If you're not familiar with the series, then you guys submit your blueprints of things like your parks and your rides and your areas and everything to me. And then using my experience of working with theme park designers and working for a theme park company uh, I then inject some realism into those blueprints using everything that I've learned over the years plus also the playtime that I've got with Planet Coaster as well so if you do want to submit your project you can absolutely leave details of that uh, I'll put in below leave those in the comments and everything and I'll, I'll come across but I think I'm also going to start a new park project so that we can build from scratch rather than using blueprints, just because it allows us to develop the series slightly more. But anyway, we're here for episode 6, so shall we see what episode 6 has got in store for us? So we're going down to the woods for this one today then. So this one's submitted by Gene Hutchinson. So Gene, thank you so much for submitting this one to me. This is Black Wolf Canyon. And uh, I've seen this one on the Facebook group already. It was posted about a year ago. Um, I've had it in my downloads ever since to check out, and then this came along as a submission for Reel Up My Ride, and I thought, oh, this is a brilliant opportunity to actually see this park in real life. And it's... Um, it's it's a lovely little park that's set within the woods. So let's let's do a, a real quick tour of, of this one, shall we? So we've got our entrance area, which is all very foresty. It's all very hidden away. It's all very undercover. I like this this idea of being undercover and being very shaded and, and almost a bit mystical. Like from the entrance, you can't really see where that where the park is going and what what you can expect from it. So it's creating that mystery already. Um, and then I'm loving this this railway line that's, that's running all the way around the outside of the park, that's serving as your transport ride. It's it's a really nice touch that you've got that you've got going on here and we've got an absolutely wide variety of roller coasters to cater for all ages and all shapes and all sizes and, and all thrill manners as well so it's a really nicely put together park it's a really well balanced park with the attractions that are on offer um, and it's very nicely decorated with all of the with all of the foliage and everything that you've got going on as well so you've got this huge just behemoth of a coaster that's that's right in front of you as you as you open out from the forest um you've got your your flat rides that are sitting in this area down the left hand side which is where we're going to be working for this episode so we'll come to that in a minute um and then we've got again just all of these these like little areas that have been set aside specifically for attractions and i like how you're how you're doing that um very interesting concept by the way of, of hiding off your your rides by using hedges i i wouldn't want to be the person that would need to keep hold of all of these hedges but it's a really nice idea to try and obscure your guest view and create that um, almost mystery that's that's behind it so like from your guest sightline here you don't really know what's the other side but you've then used all of these particle effects just to bring it to life They're like i think these are the fireflies aren't they so it looks really quite spectacular like sparkly at night it's lovely and then we come around into like these areas here so again we've just got a whole host of attractions that you can choose from within these areas you've got a couple of roller coasters that you can choose from and then this all carries on around now as i've as i've been doing the tour and as i've been looking around this is giving off a real vibe of silver dollar city and, and this western theme that you've got running throughout the whole of the park so one of my really big top tips that i give everybody is that your park should have an overarching theme and even if you're using obvious themes that aren't that overarching theme so like for example you might be using fairy tale sci-fi that sort of thing if you've got an overarching theme of western you'll always have that theme built into there somewhere and so this is what this park is doing really really well you're using individual themes but you're also using all the western theme and this is why it's giving off this silver dollar city kind of vibe to me and i think i want to stay true to that when i'm doing this reel up project as well so coming around the the park even more you've got this beautiful rapids ride that's um hidden away from everything so it's it's a world of its own right and it feels very much like it's a like it's an island in the middle of the forest and then as you're riding the the rapids you then come out and it just opens out into this water but you're using like that infinity pool style um, effect in the sense of that you open out and all you can see is water it doesn't look like they don't have hit there so that's a nice a nice little touch and this bridge is amazing i'd love to know whether whether you built it or whether it's a, a blueprint um because this this frames off the center of the park really nicely it's from the guest view you can almost see the bridge wherever wherever you are and it's like a central focal point of it and it's a really really nice touch i really like how it's how it's sort of spanning the lake and it just creates 
something different for the train to go through. It's not always going to be going through the, the park area, so it creates a bit of a break. Um, but like I say, it's a sight line wherever, wherever you are in the, in, in the park. And so then you've got a couple of other coasters that are all along here. So you can um, just go on a bit of an adventure. And again, all of your areas are contained. So quite nicely decorated. And you've got like these really nice features that, that you're starting to bring together. So things like focal points and, and everything. You're starting to think about those really, really nicely. And then you've got your triple drop towers. Very much a staple of American parks. You very much see those. Cedar Point, for example, uh, is one that like, springs to mind straight away. And then we come over to the area that we're going to be working on. So I get a lot of questions about things like maintenance areas and everything for inverted coasters. And Arrow inverted coasters are obviously some of the very first original inverted coasters there ever were. So not only do I get the privilege of working with an Arrow suspended coaster, I also get to show you how to do the maintenance areas and everything for an inverted coaster. You know, I know I talked about it a little bit in the uh, episode where we were doing the um, questions answered from the first five episodes. And I mentioned inverted coasters there, so I get to show this. But this is a nice little area. Um, it's just off the entrance area, so you come out of the the wooded area from the entrance and then you open up into this into this wider wider area and it's the first opportunity really you've got that's not very forested and so I like this idea that it opens up into a bit of an adventure area so I'd like to pull these two areas together and make more of a feature of the railway station and um, say just work on this arrow inverted coaster the swinging coaster I'm not going to do anything to the layout the layout is absolutely solid it's a really nice little layout it's got great pacing to it um, so I don't think it needs any kind of touch-up work. It's going to be more around the area and the buildings that, that we're going to we're going to look at. And so, like I say, we're going to need things like maintenance area uh, in this. And the great thing with the way that this is laid out is you've actually got a really good prime space to put it here without actually having to do much work to it. So that's what I would like to do. And you've also then got the ability to start to think about hiding that workspace by using shops and, and things that are in front of it. So I'd, I'd like to explore that a little bit more in this area. I'd like to bring this flat ride into the area. So at the moment, it's very much cut in half by the railway station. So I think we might need to we might need to move the railway station. I, d I don't know yet. It's just my really early thoughts. And then I'd like to make more of a feature of this plaza area and start to bring this to life um, some more and make it a wider open area. But like I say, I want to keep true to the Silver Dollar City theming style of that western building and very low storied buildings we're not talking massive dominating buildings we're talking one or two stories worth of westerny type themes so anyway that's my that's my initial thoughts uh, let's see how this develops shall we so without further ado i think it's time for update one let's do it shall we all right so here's your first update and there's been quite a bit of reconfiguration with this area that's needed what we essentially had before was an area that was split into three distinct zones, two pathways and the and the flat ride that was in this in this sort of area here. So I've kept some of the original features in place just so that we can get a bit of context as to where pathing and, and things were sitting before. Now, the reason I've made this bigger change is I was watching the guests and quite a lot of the time the guests were coming from the entrance, either coming down this pathway that's that's sort of at the front of the park through the forest, or coming down through the forest and past the B&M. And then they were sort of milling around in the area, not really knowing what to do, where to go, um, or walking straight through. And then they were also coming from these areas down the bottom here and coming back through our area to get back to the entrance. So this is a, this is very much a, a very much through thoroughfare, through fair. Um, and we needed to, to account for that in the area. So whereas before it was split into three distinct areas where you've got a convergence zone of three routes like this, you want to have a, a larger area so that people can mingle and move around and they've got the space and the freedom to do that. But they're not getting lost by not knowing which of the three paths to go down or which of the three areas to be in. And so that's the that's the primary reason that I've made for, for this change in this area. Now, in order to achieve that unification of all of those pathways, what I've had to do is move a lot of the rides. So I've done nothing with the uh, the Arrow coaster. That's in exactly the same place it is. I've just started some touch up work and everything on the station. And in order for me to be able to do this effectively, I needed to um, take out some of the sides of the buildings because of the grids on the pathways and stuff. So that'll all go back in, don't worry. Um, but I have moved the three main attractions or the, th the other three main attractions in this area. So you've got your star uh, flyer, you've got your star thing, your wheel, 
and uh, I don't even know what these are called, I can't remember, and your train station as well. So I've moved the train station out of the way so that it it sort of borders the, the area. So it's not it's not cutting the area off anymore, it's now in the middle. Um, and then I've moved the Star Flyer to the front of the park and then I've moved the Star Wheel, let's call it, just to be a bit of a feature in the middle. Now, when I was looking at your guest guest behaviors and everything i wanted to create this convergence zone here both of the pathways led to the same area they, they did the same job they did the same purpose so it felt like it was right that from the entrance you would split your guests off in the way that we've discussed in other episodes and then you merge them back into the area which is then when they split off again now this this creates the perfect opportunity for us to then put some kind of a feature in here like it might be some kind of like sign or some kind of sculpture or i don't know what's going to go here yet but i want to make a feature of that to say hey this is this is an area well welcome to welcome to the area so like i say we've now got the train station that's bordering the the area rather than splitting the area in two and i've just swapped out the sides that um you board and uh you board and exit and they're now on the same side so i just need to do some touching up work with the train station but i'm not going to change the design fundamentally because this is actually a really nice design and i don't really want to ruin it it's really well nice nicely put together so all i'm going to do is just uh, do just do a little bit of touching up just to hide the pathways and put some fences in and stuff and i might do some work on the inside of the building as well just to make it feel like it's an interior of a building but i'm not going to completely change the the train station i like it as it is and then we've also got the new queue for the arrow coaster as well. So I've just cattle penned this. You, you sort of tie on space at the very front. These coasters in game tend to draw quite the crowd because they're a family coaster. They have no height limits and, and stuff. So they tend to have quite a queue. And because this is at the front of the park, guests are all automatically going to be drawn to it. So you're going to want to allow a lot more queue space. Now, what I do just need to do is find a way of getting some more exit points if i can close to the pathway so that we can so we can do the fire escape principle i've got one here that i've already built in so it's it's able to uh, evacuate this area here and i've also got them here as well so that we can evacuate down here quicker i just need to think of a strategy of how we can exit this one as well whether we even need to so i need to have a think of that and then the queue for this ride then needs to come into this space as well and then that that'll sort of border this area off quite nicely and again i'm starting to think about the monetization of the area so for your arrow coaster you're going to be exiting via a gift shop and i've also just changed how this exit of this bnm i'm not going to touch the bnm and do any work on the other side but i've just changed how the exit strategy of this bnm is in the sense that this now exits onto this area and it exits facing the gift shop so it's got that idea of two coasters leaving by the same gift shop but not actually being connected so you're still separating those um those guest interactions and then in the middle here i think we're going to put some game stalls so i'm going to put food and everything along this side because this area had quite a few facilities already so we're going to put some food and everything along this side and then game stalls in the middle and it, it, it feels like that's going to sort of top off the area quite nicely it's going to be a nice wide open area but we're going to have these these game stalls in the middle um, don't know if i'm going to make them playable yet or if they're going to be just the facsimile style game stalls I don't, I don't know how that's going to sit yet and i also like the idea of this seating area as well so i'm going to move this seating area to around about this area here so that it's still interacting with all of your food stalls which are all going to have different designs and it's still a feature in this area but it also sort of creates a bit of a cut off for this star wheel so that the star wheel isn't plonked right in the middle right in the center and it gives us a bit of opportunity to put some foliage and everything in as shade for this seating area that's, that's going to be moved so that's pretty much the update as it stands at the moment the main takeaway from this one is the convergence of these two paths so that we're now bringing all of the crowds into one thing past a central sort of focal point and then through the area and down or they can filter through and start to interact with rides and facilities sort of to the back back of the area or to the with the train station that's the other side of the area so they're both out of the way now so that's that's the main takeaway from this one so i'm going to carry on with this and i will see you for the next update all right so it's time for an update and this is one of those updates where it looks like not a lot has changed but in reality a lot has changed and it's taken a long time to get here as well because this is the starting of that detailing of those buildings so taking 
as much inspiration from Silver Dollar City as I possibly can. That's a theme park that's supposed to be around 1800, isn't it? It's, it's supposed to be distressed wood, it's supposed to be an old mining town, it's supposed to be that clutter. It's a, it's a cluttered building is the only way that I can describe it. There's no real logic to how everything's put out. It's just random buildings strewn around everywhere, but actually that comes together quite nicely and to, to great effect. And so I wanted to get an element of that in here, but also a bit of order because the park itself has order when you look at everything else. So it's sort of like trying to strike that middle ground between the two. And so this is what I've done so far. The train station hasn't changed at all. I want to keep that as it is. Um, I just want to touch it up, as I've said in the previous update, just to fall, make it fall in line with the idea of the town. This game stall I want in the middle, I want this to be modern wood. I want this to be a little bit sort of mod modern in, in attempt. It's something that would have been added recently and it hasn't quite distressed properly yet. And I kind of want to keep that that idea but the buildings behind here I wanted this idea of a town and I wanted the idea of distressed town and variation within buildings as well so I did a lot of research on western style buildings and actually I love using western themes in Planet Coaster it's one of my favorite themes to work with because it's just so intricate you've got so many pieces that you can use in terms of the pillars and the vintage stuff and they all just come together really nicely and so this is what I'm starting to do here. I'm starting to pull together a lot of wood buildings with this kind of brick foundation going along. And it's all about the overhanging tin roofs and the overhanging shingle roofs and the beams that are supporting out of it and, and sort of that structure. Um, I'm trying to get these to be windows, but they just look more like jail bars because everything's so thick in the game itself. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can make this look like windows rather than jail bars but actually it works as jail bars um, I think it's quite a good little quite a good little effect if it doesn't put if I can't pull it off as windows but yeah so you just like these balconies that are sticking out and the, the vintage pieces along here it just sort of makes it quite nicely and I, I just need to make it detailed I need to add the detailing and everything to this but it's coming together quite nicely these ideas of double overhanging roofs all slanted on the same pitch just give that that sort of like nice sight line and then behind it you've got the, the pointed roofs and then this this in here would just be a flat roof because you wouldn't see it the guests wouldn't see it so they were just flat roof and then be a, a false ceiling underneath here that you would actually just then have this as some kind of open space in the top and then we come across to the next building so I kind of figured we would need some kind of toilets so I thought well, actually I could hide it around the back and around the side of this kind of building in this alleyway then sort of came about because I wanted to separate these two buildings and so I've got this this idea of again it's this balcony and it's this one's yellow and red and the, the brown underneath with the over with the overhang and the beams coming off the ceiling as well I quite like quite like this look need to put the shops in and everything just to close it all off and detail uh, all of the walls and everything but I like this idea of the yellow overhang and all I've done here is these are the um, the haunted house beams coloured yellow uh, on a horizontal and then there's a plank in the middle and then the, the second beam but slightly inset so it's not level it's not uh, flush to each other but it just gives a little bit of depth to that piece of wall and it's quite nice and then this fence itself is the uh, normal beams that are vertical and then a plank that's put on a 45 degree angle just to give it a bit of a slatty effect just to sort of break up the idea of how fences look just gives it a bit of angle gives it a bit of a sight line and it also means as well that from the sight line that it looks thinner than it actually is rather than the thickness of the actual plank itself it sort of looks much thinner this one here this is lifted directly from silver dollar city this is the pizza place uh, i don't know where it is in the park but it's the pizza place i loved the effect that you had all of this wood paneling along the floor and then you had like this stucco gray contrasting color wall looks quite like, rough around the edges and I, I love that I love that effect and then you've got the white beams the support beams and then there would be a, a roof and there's a, it's gonna be a flat roof that sort of overhangs here and so I liked this idea of using this style of building it just it just sort of rounds off the town quite nicely because it creates something that looks a little bit different it's not all wood and you've just got a bit of plaster in here as well it just makes it look quite town like I think 
And then this one here, I've started to toy with the idea of windows as walls. Um, and I don't really do this that often, so I don't really get a chance to play with this sort of stuff. But these are just the, the wooden windows. They're faced either way. And then these are just creating new windows. But it gives this lovely effect that you could do these bay windows where it, it sticks out and it's like a wooden effect. And it's the thinnest you're going to get the walls. So if you wanted to do a bay window using actual wall pieces, you'd need to make them uh, four wide or find a way of using the... Um, archway piece to create your bay window but by using windows as walls here we we're actually able to make to make that sort of bay window effect and make it look like it's it's jutting out so it's quite good I quite like this and then it's finished off quite nicely with the stone effect on the back on the haunted house piece on the top as well now this is the only piece I could find that sort of gives that that wall effect that roof effect um, and it's from the spooky set so it's quite is quite good from the sightline perspective creates a bit of height variation but it's it's not too high and then you just hide a pitched roof behind the western wooden front as well and then i've just put some wooden uh scaffold planks along this top bit here with the rope coming down just to support it just to give it a bit of an awning and then inside you'd have a ceiling that would hide all of the detail that we've got in here so that's like the the town effect that we're going for here and it's quite it's, it's working out quite nicely it's quite a straight line but actually it's not a straight line because you've got some buildings that are inset and you've got some that are sticking out because of awnings and porches and everything so it's quite a nice varied sight line and then over on the roller coaster itself i've started to do the maintenance area and start to plan this out so i've just started to put in the uh, the stairs for the access points and then you would have some kind of a shed down here that would be where your maintenance would, would happen. So this is where you dismantle your trains and lay everything out on the floor. And then I am actually think I'm going to keep this open. So all of the other sheds that I've done so far, they've all been enclosed with doors. But actually, I think I like the idea of this being completely open. It's the kind of style that you would see with this kind of coaster. They, they didn't really used to build it with a, with a cover as such. It's just sort of left open. And that's one thing you, you sometimes find with inverted coasters because the track's the other way around. So a lot of the mechanisms for moving the track across are all in here. Um, and so this is what I've done here is I've, I've just coloured the beams exactly the same colour. And I've lined up the automatic uh, beams that come with the actual coaster track itself. And just lined them up with the, the pillars here so that it looks like it's a mechanism that just slides across. So I need to do all the detailing here. I need to do the cabling and I need to do the... Uh, the, like the, the rail runs and everything to make it look like it's a it's a proper switch track uh, and then the station I've just taken the, the building away I need to start the, the detailing on this but I wanted to start the station once I knew how the, the town square was going to look so now this is starting to come together this is going to start feeding how this is so that's it for this update anyway I just wanted to give you a quick update on the things that have changed there, like I say, it's it's one of those updates that looks like it's a lot, but also doesn't look like it's a lot at the same time. So anyway, let's skip to the next update, shall we? All right, so we've got a lot going on in this update, and it's the penultimate one before we start doing any of the detailing work of the finer reeling up, you know, things like electricity cabinets, cables, and that sort of stuff. But I've gone through and I've done quite a lot of work to the area, and I've already started to flesh out some of that detail in some places just because it needed that to spark and ignite the rest of the things that were going on so i needed to know for example where the photo booth was going to be and where things in the gift shop needed to be so that's kind of what i've been doing over the last uh, couple of hours so he here we are we're starting to really really take shape now with the the town area so i've i've made some decoration to the game store obviously it still needs detailing and it needs touching up and everything but i've kept it really simple just like all of the others uh, you've got your your coin collectors at the at the front and these are just balloons and then you've just got some shooty target things so it's the same principle we're just hiding gaps in the path here rather than doing anything particularly special with the, the games unit we've got our star wheel then i've started to sort of put this uh, curbing all around the actual ride itself now as well just to start to cap off this pathway and starting to make it look how it's going to be when the flower beds are in i still haven't touched anything to do with the sign i don't know what that sign is going to look like yet i need to, I need to sit down and do that sort of work 
the star flyer then i've just put the queue in i wanted to keep the queue quite short for this one in the game it doesn't really attract that many guests so there's no real reason to have a, a massive long queue so i just need to do the fencing and, and the touching up of this area just to bring it all together started to put the fencing around the railway as well and then start to distress the ground that's underneath the tracks so you've got the stone and um, stuff that that's underneath it just to make it a bit more weathered make it a bit more real and then you've got the the crossing itself that's that's now nicely sitting there so this just needs its foliage and everything putting in place and it's all done the biggest changes though are all over here so i've started now to detail the the shops themselves so the insides are coming along quite nicely i've started to put the trimming all along the top and then any kind of paneling and things on the walls and i started to decorate it out a little bit just to make it a little less bland on the walls I started to think about how these windows are going to be and put the separating dividing lines in so i just need to go ahead and put the glass in here and then i've put the victorian um what are they called the vintage brickwork down on the floor just to hide some of the gaps and just to hide some of that um paving that we've that we've got so it just creates that consistent flooring inside pizza then i got i've done the same so i've just used the same paneling along the along the wall don't think there's much else i want to do in here maybe a few lights a few beams along the ceiling a bit of detailing but there's there's nothing really else to, to do in there it's, it's looking quite nice with its roof on now and it's sign on the on the front it's got that white wood effect it's come along quite nicely i think and then we've got our second shop here or our next shop should i say it's not second it's third um and yeah this is this is coming along nice as well i like this two-tone that we've got they're both they've got that brown hue to it so it sort of matches quite nicely and then the yellow is, is a bit of a color contrast coming along i've i've dulled down the yellow a little bit it was a bit too bright it's looking a bit too colorful it needed to be a bit weathered and a bit distressed so that's what i've started to do here just added some again some detailing along here so i've put the plank where the counter would be and then i've just given it some underneath support to put some lights in and some de decor but i don't think i'm going to do any more to this i think if, if i put any more on it's going to start to overwhelm it a little bit maybe a bit of touching up around the edges but nothing fundamentally different this is where the biggest change has come from is the gift shop so i wanted the the gift shop to be a little bit of a modern interior gift shop rather than distressed like the rest would be so i've just put this modern paneling across the across the back and this is where the photos are going to be so again i just need to put the, the staff in that are going to be working and then just to put the pictures themselves into the screens but this is pretty much how this is now going to look and it's it's again it's just your, your typical fried photo booth and the camera is already on the um already on the roller coaster so that's all good that's that's already in place and then over here i've just started to do the detailing of the actual interior of the gift shop just put some shelves up just put some toys and everything out just to give it that that impression again i don't i don't know if i'll do much more to this i just wanted to be representative of, of a gift shop rather than it being fully detailed fully fleshed out i've started then to do the maintenance area so we've now got a maintenance shed that needs all of its detailing and stuff adding here electricity cabinets and cables and signs and stuff like that just put some safety rails up along the stairs i've done that across the top here as well and i've also supported the catwalk so the catwalk that was here wasn't supported before but now it's it is it's supported by both the green uh, the green ones that we've got here and also the red one that's that's sitting underneath so i've just made sure that that's that that's as it as it would be in real life and then the biggest change is the station so the station has really really changed and i've i've sort of kept the original walls for this station on the un underside but i've used the barn doors turned the other way around to get this wood effect and the it's they've been randomized as well so i've sort of staggered where they're putting and i've and i've turned them around and unfortunately you do still get this almost uniform conformity with the with the colors and everything but it still looks good i mean it's it still looks quite quite varied and i've done it in all different angles so these are the small windows um just turned backwards these are the barn doors that are turned all sorts of ways and, and recolored but it looks quite nice it's got this got this almost like a panel effect on the actual station itself and if we go inside I've also started to do some work in here as well just to make it a little bit more industrial uh, just to give it that industrial look so I've put some HVAC 
pipes and everything along the top and the and the fans and then i just varied the panels along here just to give it a bit of variation i didn't want this complete stark wall i wanted to mix it up and these are the tar roofs and they've got um beams wood beam supports so i quite like this in this in the sense that it creates a bit of variation to the ceiling and it's and it gives it a bit of structure to it so that's turned out quite nicely and then the station itself i have just put the support beams in so these are structurally sound they would be as you would find them in in real life uh, put some lights along the side here and put the fans along so this is now pretty much how i think it's going to be it just needs its safety signage just needs a few uh, details cabinets and stuff that, that need to be added but otherwise that's all that's all sitting as it as it would do and then you've got a real small maintenance bay here I, I, it would be used for really small maintenance you wouldn't necessarily need anything, anything major and then all, all i've done here is i've noticed that the station doesn't continue the the gully way for the actual train to stay uh, to stay sturdy so this is what i've done here is i've just used the train rails just to bring it along the station and then just it comes into the it comes into the station and it's still consistent it's still being held in place so i just wanted to add that add that element and then i just brought the path down this way as well and just started the fence work so it now just needs its plant work and, and everything and it's all going to come together so the final update then is, is actually going to finish it off i think it's quite it's quite nice we've managed to open up this sight line quite nicely as well whereas whereas before we didn't really have this this swooping effect that was coming over and anything of interest in front of it we've now managed to open that up quite nicely we're hiding the rest of the roller coaster from the town and then it just comes over the top every now and again it's, it's quite nice so yeah so the next update i think we'll finish this and then uh i think the we should just go for it shall we here we go okay then so black wolf canyon has a new area welcome to raven rodeo let's have a look at the chain shall we Welcome to our brand new area then, Raven Rodeo. And I toyed with the name a little bit with this one. I wanted to use a bit of an ostinato because that seems to be my style. I do that quite a lot with like Willow Woods and Vista View and, and whatever. So I get, came up with Raven Raven Rodeo. And I pulled together this feature in the middle here. It's very much inspired by the uh, one that Jubilee Gardens had when Mars Bandit did his episode. And I liked that idea of the cogs and I liked that idea of this central feature. But... This one is more of a I'm in your way, move out of my way kind of feature, whereas the one that Mask Bandit did for Jubilee Gardens is very much a splash pad, very much interactive. I wanted to have this a bit more of a garden where you have to walk around it, particularly as this is a convergence point for guests. So I wanted to have the ability to move guests around the feature rather than move them through it. So it's still forcing the guests to split off and go, go their different ways. And then for the actual sign itself, I just use a couple of TMTK items for the letters and the colors have come from Raven itself. So the red and the green has come from Raven and the purple is found elsewhere in the, uh, in the area. So I just wanted to pull that together. So I've also done the garden work along here. I've kept it quite minimal actually. I've kept it consistent colours and very overgrown and bushy because that's the, the feel that this area is going for. Not many trees. I wanted to keep this idea of a very thin tree palette just because it's it affects the sight line a little bit too much if you've got trees in this area. I mean you've spent loads of time decorating your buildings and making them look good. The idea isn't it's not a foresty area, it's a westerny area, so it's it was open, all brick, all exposed brick. So I wanted to keep that feel going on. Rest of the details then, I have finished off the detailing of the game stall, so just put the toys and everything at the top. This is now looking quite nice. 
and then I've just put the electricity cabinets. And this is an interesting one, actually. I've been having some chats with some, some people from around the world, and different countries do the idea of electricity differently. So, like, in the UK, we tend to hide all of our electrics away from everybody, and you only your engineers and only key people would then have access to those electric points. So, for example, you wouldn't necessarily see exposed cables in a roller coaster station, but you, and you also wouldn't have them in the reach of customers here. But in other places this is absolutely fine as long as it's as long as it's signed off so i've kind of kept it here just because it adds that little bit of detail but just have that in mind you're going to need to work with the legislation of, of the country that you're in to know whether this is okay or not so yeah uh, then i've just added the pad and everything to the star wheel so this is now a, a nice consistent area i've added in all of the picnic area that i wanted to have and this is under under cover so that it's shady when it's uh, sunny I've also done the star flyer as well. So this uh, this was using just the normal terrain and the normal pathing that we've got in game to start with, <clears throat> but this um, ended up having like a gap in the queue line. So I've just covered it again using the firehouse technique that I use for all of the others. And luckily, because we're using an actual wall that was in the in the park already, it kind of hides that join quite nicely, and it just creates a, a nice flush. Uh, to the garden effect so this is this has turned out quite nicely it turns out quite quite well added a sign then for raven itself and then just your normal ride sign saying this is a, a dangerous sign or a dangerous sign a dangerous ride make sure that you're fit to ride first hand and you'd probably have a queue time sign here as well which i would which i would put in but obviously i don't make the files for those available so there's no point and then the queue line itself I've just also covered up as well so in it's we're remo re removing all of those um, gaps that we've got in the in the queues so it now just actually looks like a solid solid path network done all the signs around the ride areas so you've now got the the danger of death signs where you're close to a roller coaster um, the one there and then you've also got danger ride area for all of the other rides as well so over here and then when it comes to the shops itself not a lot has changed i've just done the i've just done the detailing so i've put the benches and everything in um but the insides themselves are, are largely unchanged i was quite happy with how they were actually i didn't want to go into the realms of super ultra detail for these i just wanted them to be grab some food and, and go kind of style i wanted them to be more decorated on the outside and that to be the the central feature especially when it comes to this town style like it's it's in a it's in a in a line what you don't what you don't notice and what's not obvious and what i quite like about this is none of these buildings are on the same angle uh, they are moved ever so slightly just to give that slight variation that slight sub subconscious random placing but from here it looks like it's one long line apart from the end where it sort of dips out in a dog leg but these are actually on a completely different angle i say completely different it's probably one or two degrees but it's not noticeable but subconsciously noticeable and I wanted each building to be different as well. I think I've managed to achieve that. I like the over the overhanging uh, roof on this one. And then I absolutely love the colours of this one as well. Like the, the grey and the white just go really well together. And the, the, the wood versus the stucco just looks just looks awesome. Really pleased with how this one how this one turned out. Especially with what you can achieve in game. So you're quite limited because you can't do distressed look very well. You have to do that using colours and certain certain things. And then this one, it hasn't changed at all. I've just sort of kept it, kept that as it is. I liked it as it was. And then inside the gift shop, again, all, all exactly the same. I've just put your clutter outside the front and I've just put the uh, the, the signs up, changed the colours of the grabber machines and then put your actual photos in along here just to make sure that it's looking a bit more real. And then inside inside the gift shop, it looks, it looks good. Again, it's not one that I would spend a lot of time doing a lot of work to when it's not really playable i just put it in there for the sake of putting it in there so you can see you can see how it would look so this auto save is going to take quite a while so uh, that's the one joy of this park is it's quite a quite a large park so i just wanted to talk a little bit more about these uh, these gift shops while we're, whilst we're in here so all of the park itself would have like a, a gift line in its in its own right so You'd tend to find places like Legoland, for example, they would sell Lego and then they would have exclusive items to that park. And then you would have things like SeaWorld would have some kind of oceanic 
kind of gifts and everything going with it. So this is the kind of theme that I wanted to go down go down on this side is I wanted this to be a bit more sort of like a cuddly toy. You would almost feel like the park would have a mascot or two and you'd be selling those mascots wherever that wherever they could. And so this was kind of what I was going down with the gift shop route and also with the game stall as well. Like these would be your mascots throughout the park. So that's that's sort of what I wanted to what I wanted to achieve from that. Backstage area then has been cluttered up, but not too much clutter. So when I was watching all of the videos for an arrow suspended coaster, most of the areas are actually outside. They're not under cover. They're not really. They're not. They're not. They don't really make much effort with it. The only the only example that I found where an effort was made was Vampire at Chessington World of Adventures, and that's hidden behind a black curtain. So you sort of your final break run goes into the actual whole maintenance area that it's hidden by a black curtain. And so I noticed that all of the maintenance areas are kept really clear. There's very little clutter. There's it's all very it's all very industrial and all very open like this, but you don't see much clutter around. So this is what I've kind of done here. I've put the clutter underneath on the ground all along here but the actual area itself is still is still really clear and all i've done is i've just added all of the signs that needed to be added the death by falling signs and whatever and also just a couple of electricity points just as a um an electricity area for this for this part of the the ride and also the actual transfer track mechanisms as well have now just been added in but this is pretty much all you would find in this area because you would move all of the tools to and from your storage shed which is at the back here and i've kept this nice and simple as well i've just added all of the air, air con units and the electricity cupboards and a couple of windows and everything i didn't i didn't want to do too much to this to this one it's again it's representative of, of what it was and you need to know when to stop when you're doing a when you're doing a read-up you need to know when you're taking too much time doing things that just don't really matter but the biggest change, and I, I did this as part of the pass when I was doing the final bit, thinking, right, have I done everything? Have I got everything? And I had noticed I'd completely missed out any kind of accessibility sort of pass on it. And I thought, how are our disabled guests going to enjoy this, this ride? And they couldn't. So this is a really, really high station. Um, and it's nothing wrong with having a high station. I mean, it's it's needed for the actual the actual ride itself to be effective. So there's nothing wrong with making high stations, but there is something wrong with not allowing everybody to ride it. And so, normally, what you tend to find is that you would have either really shallow slopes where you've got the room to do that, or you would find some kind of terrain undulation that would come up and meet the station, and then it's not so much of a climb to the station. You've got a high station, but it's not it's not a climb to the station. In the absence of being able to do any of that, you would use lifts. So this is what I've done here now because of the way that the ride is laid out and without having to do masses of work to the actual layout of the ride I've put the the lift on the entrance side rather than the exit side now typically in the UK you find that it's in the exit side where you would have your disabled access because that's the point of easiest entry and exit and it's also the point of easiest emergency exit as well you want people to, to leave the ride rather than to have to go through the go through the queue. But for this ride, I've, I've sort of had to swap it around and say, OK, our entrance and exit would actually be via the uh, entrance side. So that's kind of what I've what I've done here. But I've just done the lift. And again, this is this is sort of playing a bit fast and loose with health and, health and safety laws in the sense that you're completely enclosed in the lift. You could you couldn't fall out. And what you tend to find with the disabled lifts is they have clamps that go onto the wheels. And so your your actual wheelchair can't move during motion, and these hydraulics are really really strong. They would they would support the weight of this of this lift with no problem. But something of this height makes me a little bit nervous. Having this kind of open lift, you would probably want a proper lift shaft that's enclosed, and a proper a proper lift in this in this instance. But in the absence of being able to do that in here, I've kept this nice and open. I've made sure that you can't just walk down to the uh, walk down to the edge and just fall off so you've got this enclosed space and these are normally locked by um, magnetic means so you can't actually open these gates until the the magnetic bracing has been attached reattached here so you'd have a magnet in the bottom of this lift hill uh, of this lift you'd have a magnet in the top here and then as soon as they as soon as they meet this then would unlock 
these two doors and these two doors, but it would lock these doors so you wouldn't be able to enter the, the actual restricted area. And then vice versa, it works works both ways. So your guests themselves wouldn't necessarily be able to just walk to the edge and just fall off. But yeah, this does make me nervous. I would, I would be more tempted to have this as a full-on lift shaft, but that would, inc that would require a complete station re reconfiguration. And then that would also probably be on the exit side rather than the entry side. So at least our, at least our disabled guests can now actually ride this, this ride. I think that's the, I think that's the most important thing about this. So in terms of the actual station area itself, then um, I've just put in all of our signage that we need and I've just put in all of the, the fences and the, um, the, what they called the, um, Oh, what are they? Those, those shelves uh, to put your stuff on whilst you're waiting for the ride. Gone gone completely blank. Um, and then I've also just put the cabling along the, the side here. So this is something that I was just mentioning down in the games area. Uh, we, we wouldn't necessarily find this so much in the UK uh, just because it's probably a bit too exposed. It rains quite a lot here and stuff. We get wet and we tend to find them away from gullies. But I've just added it in anyway just to, just to have the realism. And added the panel as well, just in case you needed to stop the ride or needed to do any kind of any kind of work to it. And then the actual ride area itself hasn't really changed. I've, I, I didn't mention this in the previous update, but I, ha I had already done this. I've just put a retaining wall in along here just because this was quite a steep hill. It was just a landslip risk and it was coming around the hill as well. So you had that sort of like that slip the land could quite easily just fall away so i've just put the retaining retaining wall in and i've also thinned out the trees a little bit as well and you get a much better result if you use trees very sparingly rather than um, bushing them bushing them all together i get that this is supposed to be a forest a forest look so i've just created a few clearing areas and everything just to make the just allow that that whole um ride area to breathe really and so that's it really for the actual uh, the build itself so it's looking quite nice it's actually it's come together really nicely and I, I say that every time it's almost like it's a take a shot I've said it um, so yeah this is the this is the new area welcome to Raven Rodeo so if you've liked the episode thank you so much for for coming along guys I really do appreciate it you know what to do your comments your likes your subscriptions even your dislikes all, all come into the YouTube algorithm to help it to find new audiences and we are we are growing so thank you so much for, for coming along if you want to have your sub submission featured then you know what to do the description and i'll leave all the details of that in the description and everything but until we speak again take care of yourselves and i will see you for the next episode take care bye bye